Lost Inheritance Larry's granddad was a wealthy man who loved playing pranks on his relatives. That's why, when he passed away, no one could find his will. But one day, five years later, Larry was looking through some old papers. Suddenly, his breath caught in his throat. The document he was holding was his granddad's will. It read, I hid all my money and other valuables at 2 p.m. sharp under my favorite cherry tree, right where its shadow ends. The one who digs it out will be my heir. Larry was ecstatic. He was going to be rich. He drove to his granddad's villa and found the cherry tree. He waited for an hour or so until 2 p.m. and started to dig. But try as he might, his efforts didn't pay off. Confused and upset, he had to return home. Why didn't he find anything? It's been several years since the granddad hid his valuables. The tree has grown taller, and its shadow has become longer, too. A smart investigator A man living in a small village in the mountains got his goat stolen. He was sure one of his neighbors was behind this crime. The head of the village invited four suspects and said, I'm going to give each of you a magic stick. Bring them to me in the morning. By that time, the thief's stick will have grown by five inches. The next day, the head of the village examined the suspect's stick. He immediately knew who had taken the goat. How? The thief's stick was five inches shorter than those of the rest. He had broken it expecting it to grow longer during the night. A realization. Three friends fell asleep under a tree in the countryside. While they were resting, a boy painted mustaches on their faces. Once the men woke up, they started to laugh. But then, all of a sudden, they stopped. Why? At first, they saw the mustaches on their friends' faces and found it funny. But then, they realized their friends were laughing too. It meant they had mustaches on their faces as well. An apple riddle Eric was locked in a room with 19 other people. Each of them could see the entire room and all the people inside without turning their head or body or moving in any other way. To get out of the room, Eric had to place an apple in such a way that everyone but one person could see it. The guy managed to do it. How? He put the apple on one person's head. A weird choice. Every day, Mark rides his bike to the railway station to get to the college. There are two stops near his home. One, one mile away from his house, and the other, two miles away in the opposite direction. In the morning, he always gets on the train at the first stop. And in the afternoon, he gets off at the second. Why? Mark's home and the stations are on the hill. And this method allows the guy to ride his bike down without any effort. A draw. Two teams were playing soccer against each other. Each of them scored two goals in total. And still, it wasn't a tie since one team won and the other lost. How come? One of the teams scored an own goal. Time travel. An inventor has created a time machine. 
He's packed enough food, water, and other necessities, and is now ready to test his invention. He sets the timer to go 500 years back into the past. The man is about to press the start button when a thought comes to his mind. He slaps his forehead, takes the time machine and his supplies, and goes downstairs. What for? This way, he'll avoid a nasty fall. Multi-story buildings were rare five centuries ago. A money problem. A notorious criminal caught rich businessman Brian and locked him in a room. I won't let you go until you double the money I leave for you. And the criminal put 5,000 bucks on the table. By the time he returned, Brian had already doubled the money. He hadn't left the room or communicated with anyone. Then, how did he do it? He put the money in front of the mirror. Granted wishes. Amanda was walking along the beach one day and found a glass bottle. The thing looked ancient, and the girl had to put a lot of effort into opening it. To her shock, guess what? A genie appeared from the bottle. I'll grant you three wishes, but there's one condition. You can't wish for more wishes. Amanda agreed and still managed to get more wishes. How did she do it? She started with wishing that the genie allowed her to ask for more wishes. Strange reaction Two British women wanted to lose weight. They went to the gym, ate healthily, and drank a lot of water. In two weeks, both of them lost 10 pounds. But one woman was happy and the other upset. Why? The first woman lost weight, and the second, 10 pounds in UK money. 11. How did she survive? Melissa stayed late at work one evening. When she was walking home, it was already dark. Suddenly, she noticed a group of people. They were moving in a strange, jerky way, closer and closer. With growing horror, Melissa realized the approaching people were actually zombies. In a moment, she got surrounded, then darkness. And still, the next day, the girl was in the kitchen, making herself a vegetable salad. How is it possible? Look at the date. It's November 1st. It was Halloween the day before. And zombies were just some dressed-up guys. Beach Volleyball Andrew and his friend Kenneth went to the beach to have some fun. Andrew started to play volleyball with Gary, a guy they met there. After the game was over, Andrew went to a beach bar and ordered a lemonade. But after drinking it, he almost immediately felt sick and lost consciousness. Kenneth called an ambulance, and his friend was taken to a hospital. There it was discovered Andrew had been poisoned. The police questioned the suspects. Kenneth said, I'm sure the barman put something in Andrew's drink. The barman exclaimed, Why would I poison my customer? It was probably the guy he played volleyball with. He lost the game and wanted to get revenge. Gary said, After we finished playing, I went to swim in the sea. I didn't even notice Andrew had been taken away. Who poisoned Andrew? It was the barman. He lied about Gary losing the game to frame the guy. A teacher's riddle. A student had failed his test and came to his teacher asking how he could improve his marks. The teacher replied, 
If you manage to solve my riddle, I'll give you a better mark. You have a cardboard box. It's easier to lift from a wooden floor than from a steel table. What's in the box? <laughs> the student thought for a while and answered correctly. What did he say? The box is filled with magnets. A missing model. Ashley was a popular fashion model. On Friday, she had to open a show. But 10 minutes before the event, she vanished. Several witnesses claimed the girl had been taken away in a black car. The police questioned four suspects. Betty, Ashley's colleague, said, I felt sleepy before the show. I would made myself a cup of coffee and was drinking it when Ashley disappeared. Kevin, the manager, told the detective some equipment had been broken. He was trying to solve this problem. Paul, the hairstylist, explained that he had been refreshing the model's makeup. And Donna, the designer, said she had only come several minutes before the show. Who was behind Ashley's disappearance? It's Paul. He's a hairstylist, and they don't deal with makeup. Plus, there are no beauty products at a station. In disguise. A feared criminal managed to escape from the police. He got a job in a wealthy mansion. When the detectives arrived there, they found out three men had been hired recently. They questioned each of them. Michael, the cook, told the police he had been working in a restaurant before. But then the restaurant went out of business and he found a new job. John, the gardener, answered he had always been interested in plants. After finishing garden design courses, he landed this job. Robert, the security guard, said his father was the house owner's friend. He helped Robert to get his position. Who's the criminal? It's the cook. Before the police came, he'd been trying to make an omelet. But look, it's full of eggshells. A real cook would never make such a mistake. A train mystery. It's something that comes with a train, leaves with a train, but is no use to a train. And yet, no train can go without it. What is it? It's noise. Yeah, really. A tragedy in the artist's house. Ryan was a famous artist. Unfortunately, when he was 60, he had an accident that left him blind. The man hired three people to help him. Jason, the driver, Laura, the housekeeper, and Timothy. He looked after the garden. One afternoon, Timothy went to talk to Ryan and found the artist on the floor. Someone had attacked him the police arrived to investigate. Jason told him he and Ryan had had a great time in the morning playing computer games. Then he left to pick up Ryan's daughter from the airport. Laura said she'd spent all day in the kitchen cooking dinner. And Timothy said that before finding Ryan, he had been at the market choosing new fruit trees for the garden. Who was behind the attack? It was Jason. Ryan was blind and couldn't play computer games. Bizarre guests. When Melissa was traveling around Europe, she met several girls who were from the same city as her. They got along very well. When all of them returned from the trip, Melissa decided to organize a get-together and invited them to her house. The girls came with a big cake and lots of colorful balloons. But even before they touched the food or drinks, Melissa felt dizzy and lost consciousness. When the girl recovered, she was having a splitting headache. There was nobody around, and all her money and other valuables were missing. Melissa looked at the photos taken before she fainted. After examining them for a couple of minutes, 
she understood what had happened. Can you figure it out? There was sleeping gas in the balloons. The other girls must have put on face masks not to be affected by the gas. When Melissa lost consciousness, they took all her expensive stuff and left. Wow, time to get some better friends, huh? A mysterious disappearance. Stephen called the police and told him his wife Lisa was missing. She called her husband at 8 in the evening and told him she was about to go home. But she never arrived. The police questioned three suspects. Ashley, Lisa's best friend, said she had just returned from her vacation. Mark, the neighbor, was sure he'd seen Lisa in the afternoon, driving off in her car. And Paul, Lisa's colleague, told the police he'd spotted the woman in a shopping mall in the evening. Who's lying? Paul knows something about Lisa's whereabouts. The woman wasn't in the shopping mall that night. She was at a movie theater. A call to the police. Amanda was going through a deserted park when someone hit her on the head. When she recovered, her bag, along with her phone, money, and documents were gone. There were no people around but for one elderly lady. Amanda rushed toward her, explained the situation, and asked to call the police. The lady told her not to worry and started to press 911 on her phone. After talking for a minute, she said, They're going to be here in no time. As soon as Amanda heard these words, she sprinted off. Why? Amanda saw the lady's phone didn't have any signal. Then how could she call the police? A suspicious senior citizen. A date. Betty was on cloud nine after two guys asked her out. But she felt she couldn't give hope to both of them. She had to choose one. Stephen was her secret crush. From a rich family, handsome and smart. She'd been dreaming about him for a year. John was a good guy too. She knew for sure he was kind and funny. The girl was at a loss. Which one should she pick? Any ideas? Betty should go for John. Stephen isn't serious about her. He has a lipstick mark on his neck, left there by Stanley. So yeah, better choose John. A bizarre code. Brian's friends invited him to spend the summer vacation in Europe with them. Unfortunately, the guy had serious study problems. To punish him, his dad took his passport away and locked it in a safe. The only way for Brian to get his documents and have some fun was to crack the code. Yeah, we still don't want to crack the books, huh? When he sneaked into his dad's study, he saw a piece of paper stuck to the safe. There were three drawings on it. A rose, a rainbow, a calico cat, and a banana. Brian thought for a while and then pressed four numbers. The code was correct and the safe opened. Which numbers were they? Two, seven, three, one. Each digit corresponds to the numbers of colors of the objects in the picture. An anxious husband. A man called the police. He could hardly talk. My wife! She got into a car accident! When the police arrived, the woman had been already rushed to a hospital. The detectives found out that she had crashed into a tree right next to her house. The car was beyond repair. One of the police officers examined the vehicle and saw the woman's bag. Inside, he found her driver's license and car keys, some money and bank cards, a notebook and her passport. After that, the husband was immediately arrested. Why? How could the woman's car key be in her bag if she was driving? That's a good question. Find the thief. Detective Lawrence was walking along the street when he heard someone screaming. He rushed over there and saw a teenager crying. What happened? 
I was talking to my friend when someone grabbed my phone and pushed me to the ground. When I came to my senses, there was no one around, but I saw that cafe's door closing. The detective entered the cafe the girl was talking about and looked around. There were five people inside. All of them seemed to be rather decent. Can you figure out who's the criminal? It's the man near the coffee machine. His drink is still steaming. It means he just bought it. A crime in the neighborhood. One day, Mr. Martin called the police. His car was stolen right from the street outside his house. The detective questioned three suspects. Eric, a teenager who lived next door, said he had been at school and had seen nothing suspicious. Amy, a young artist renting a house across the street, had been too engrossed in her work to pay attention to her surroundings. But Mr. Brandon, an elderly man whose house was next to Amy's, accused Eric of taking the car. Mr. Brandon was having his breakfast when he saw the teenager get into the vehicle and drive off. Strangely, after his words, the police officers arrested the elderly man. Why? The only thing Mr. Brandon could see out of his window during breakfast was his tall brick wall. Desperate for help Kenneth, a newbie police officer, was walking along the street, proudly wearing his uniform. Suddenly, a pretty girl rushed toward him. Help! she screamed. I've been mugged! After Kenneth made her calm down, the girl told him her story. I was walking home from college when a man ran up to me. He hit me in the eye and took all my jewelry and money. When Kenneth heard this, he immediately realized the girl was lying. How? The girl was wearing glasses. If the criminal had hit her in the eye, her glasses would have been shattered. A runaway wife Sharon's husband was a wealthy businessman. He never had time for his wife. One day, the young woman had enough. She took some money and ran away. She knew it wouldn't be difficult for her husband to find her. That's why she tried to be as discreet as possible. The next hotel where she checked in was good, but nothing special. She hardly had enough time to unpack her things when someone knocked on the door. The man said he was from the reception. But when Sharon opened the door, she realized her husband's people had found her. How did she figure it out? The man's uniform was different from the one the hotel receptionists were wearing. A missing collection. Mr. Bernard had an unusual hobby. He collected rare watches. One day, he came home and discovered his collection was gone. He called the police. They decided to start by questioning the man's neighbors. George said he had a busy day. Meetings, video conferences, emails. Anna told police she had been feeling unwell since the very morning. She canceled all her plans and stayed in bed. Jason said his car had broken down and he'd been repairing it for the whole day. One person seemed suspicious enough for the police to arrest them. Who was it? Anna was lying. Look at her, all dressed up, wearing accessories and makeup. She doesn't look like a person who has spent all day in bed. A blatant lie. A famous pop singer, Anthony Black, was attacked after his concert. He was taken to a hospital. The police questioned several of his fans. Linda was crying. I took Anthony's autograph and couldn't wait to boast to my friends about it. Lisa said, I asked Mr. Black to sign his photo. After I got it, I went to buy a coffee. Jason added, Anthony was super nice and friendly. I didn't notice anything strange. The police immediately arrested the fan who seemed suspicious. Who was it? It was Lisa. The autograph in the photo looks different from the singer's real signature. Mm Mm-hmm. 
Once, Adam agreed to take part in a popular TV show. He had to crack logic puzzles and solve detective riddles to get $1 million. If only he knew at that moment where this decision would lead him. When the guy arrived at the venue, a staff member put a blindfold over his eyes. After that, Adam was taken someplace and left alone. After waiting in silence for a couple of minutes, the guy pulls the blindfold off. He's in a rather large room. There's nothing there except four doors. The guy feels something's wrong, but he can't grasp what exactly. And suddenly, he realizes the ceiling is going down. He needs to get out of the room and fast. He examines the doors more closely. Aha! They all have notes that describe what's behind each of them. The first one, a lake full of piranhas. The second, a room where an avalanche will happen once he sets foot inside. The third, high voltage wires hanging above a wet floor. The fourth is a 15th floor room with only one window. Adam knows he needs to decide fast. He opens one door and jumps inside a moment before the ceiling crashes down. Luckily, it's a safe room. Which one is it? The guy picked room number 3. The wires don't touch the water on the floor, and there's some space left between them and the ground. It means it's safe to crawl under the wires. Adam makes it to the next room and finds a note with a task on it. A coin is put into an empty bottle, which is then plugged with a cork. How can you remove the coin without breaking the bottle or pulling the cork out? Adam doesn't need much time to get the coin out. What does he do? Adam pushes the cork into the bottle and shakes the coin out. His next task is to figure out who a criminal is. An elderly lady was walking in the park when a stranger grabbed her bag and hurried away. The woman told the police the man was wearing a coat, a hat, and a pair of glasses. He also had a mustache. The police officers ran in the direction the lady showed them. A bit further, they found the hat, coat, and glasses lying on the ground. They figured out the criminal could hide in the nearby cafe. Adam has a photo of four men, all of them cafe visitors. He needs to understand who took the bag from the elderly woman. He immediately points at one man, and his answer is correct. Which man is it? It can't be the man in a hat or the one wearing a coat. The criminal also got rid of his glasses. It means the man wanted by the police is the one on the right. He has a small wound on his upper lip, must have got rid of his fake mustache in a hurry. The riddle is solved and Adam can go further. Soon he finds out he has to act as a detective again. A famous artist nearly finished his new painting but he had to leave for France. It was an urgent matter, and it kept the man in Paris for a week. When he returned, he discovered his work had been spoiled. Someone had spilled black paint all over it. And it happened recently because the paint was still fresh. The artist was furious. He invited his maid, gardener, and maintenance worker and questioned them. He said, someone spoiled my painting while I was away. Do you know anything about it? I never enter your studio without your permission, the maid said. The maintenance worker added, We don't use black paint for any repairs in the house. I don't know who could do that. Gardner got angry. I've been working for you for 15 years. Do you think I could do this to you? All of them sounded sincere. But then, who spoiled the painting? Being a smart guy, Adam realizes right away the one to blame is the maintenance worker. The artist never mentioned the way the painting was spoiled. Since the answer is correct, Adam can continue. He enters a narrow hall. There, on a small table, there's a glass of orange juice. It seems to be half full, but Adam has to figure out if it's really so. 
How can he do it without using any measuring tools or pouring any juice out of the glass? Adam tilts the glass until the juice is just touching the rim. The bottom of the glass is invisible. So the guy concludes the glass is more than half full. If a part of the bottom was visible, it would mean the glass was less than half full. The next riddle Adam has to crack goes like this. A man is thinking about how fast his life is flying by. The day before yesterday, I was 34. And the next year, I'll be 37. The man hasn't made any mistakes in his calculations. Can you guess what day his birthday is? Adam spends 20 minutes trying to figure this puzzle out and succeeds. What is his answer? The man's birthday is on December 31st. He's thinking about it on January 1st. The day before his birthday, he was 34. The next day, he turned 35. A new year started the next day, and that year, he's going to turn 36. And he will be 37 the following year. The riddle is solved, and Adam is allowed to move to the next room. In the middle, there's a large TV screen. Suddenly, it switches on. Adam sees two girls who are going down to a dark basement. No, 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 the guy whispers. That's how all horror movies start. And right he is. The door slams behind the girls' backs. It's so unexpected that Adam jumps in his seat. The girls scream. Since the power's out, one of them switches on the flashlight on her phone. They see three doors. Something's moving behind the first one. Who's there? Adam can hear one girl whispering. Her voice is trembling. It turns out that the first door hides, oh no, several hungry zombies. A big fire's ranging behind the second door. And if the girls open the third door, they'll see exposed live electrical wires. And then, a voice tells Adam, you have to say which door they should choose. If you make a mistake, they won't survive. Hmm, no pressure whatsoever. Luckily, Adam is smart enough to help the girls. Which door does he pick? The third door. The power's out, and the wires are totally harmless. The next riddle Adam has to solve is a logic one. One wizard makes his prisoners choose between two doors. Behind one of them, there's an unfriendly dragon. Behind the other, a chest with gold. Pick the right door and you'll become a rich person and will be allowed to leave the castle. But if it's the wrong door, well, you aren't likely to survive. There are two signs on the doors. One always lies, the other is truthful. On the first door, it's written, the treasure is here, the dragon is in the next room. The other sign says, the treasure and the dragon aren't in the same room. Where is the gold? The chest with the treasure is in the second room. The second statement is true, which means the first one is false. Adam knows the show must go on, but where should he go next? The room he's in has four doors, one in each of its walls. After looking around, he notices a note in the corner. He picks it up and sees a strange inscription. After thinking for a while, he opens some application on his phone, looks at it, and leaves through one of the doors. What does the inscription mean, and what application is it? Adam turned the note upside down. Now it read south. Then he used a compass app on his phone to find out which door was leading to the south. The guy found himself facing the last challenge. It was another detective case. Ruth was moving home. While she was busy with boxes, someone took her laptop. 
the girl went over to her new neighbors. Perhaps one of them had seen something. Eric told her he had been staying at home with a high fever for the whole day. Emma said she didn't even know a new neighbor was coming. And Jonathan explained he just got home from his office. Who took Ruth's laptop? Adam is an observant guy. He immediately noticed that Jonathan's car was covered with a thick layer of snow. The man lied. He wasn't at work. Finally, Adam gets back to the main hall. He's passed all the challenges and cracked all the riddles. Well, I guess he's about to become a millionaire. And waiting for him inside is the tax man. Oh boy! You open your eyes and find yourself handcuffed in a small, dark room. Your sister is not with you, although you clearly remember walking outside together in the rain. Well, it seems you were kidnapped and now have to get out. You have to solve some riddles to escape, and each time you'll have 10 seconds to think. Are you ready? First, how about getting rid of these handcuffs? You turn around and see three buttons on the wall. A red one, a yellow one, and a green one. One of them will set you free. But if you choose the wrong button, sirens will sound. But, lucky you, there's a note on the wall saying T-D-U-N-O-R-T-E-B. Decide which button you should press. Since you put the letters in the right order, you'll get the red button. Since only one button releases you and the other two are traps, the sign indicates the one that will set you free. You press the red button and the handcuffs fall off. Phew! The first step is complete, but there's more to go. You'll have to find your sister, release her, and then find a way out. You search for the exit. But there are three doors, so you look through the peepholes to decide which route to take. Behind one door, many little robots are poised to attack. Behind the second door, there's a room on fire. And behind the last one, you find a room completely filled with water. Which one should you pick to stay safe? the first one. Although there are robots, they're still super small and probably can't cause you much harm. Well, at least definitely less than the fire or water. So you take a deep breath and with your heart skipping a beat, you enter the first room. The robots attack you, but the first one has a giant red button you step on and it turns them off. The second one you kick really hard and it smashes, hitting the wall. Half a minute later, you're already outside the room, safe and sound, all body parts intact. Success! But what if the robot sent a signal to the people who kidnapped you? You have to hurry. You move forward, crossing the corridor, and here it is again. Three doors, and you have to decide which one to pick. Think carefully for 10 seconds. It can save you a ton of time if you go the right way from the very beginning. So which way should you go? The third door. There's a red finger stains on the doorway. Your sister must have been trying hard to break out. You take that door and find yourself in a narrow hallway. You can see the stains here and make absolutely sure you're going in the right direction. You run for about 20 minutes, continually taking turns. You start feeling a little dizzy, but still can't see an end to this hallway. Another 5 minutes pass. You take another turn and suddenly crash into a metallic door. You try to open it, but it's locked. On a little screen, a red sign appears, asking for a password. Below, there's even a password hint. 12345678. Can you crack the code? There are 17 spaces. After reading the number out loud slowly, you get it. You type number 2. 
then number 4 three times, 5 sixes, and 7 eighths. The light changes to green, and the door is unlocked. You're in a long and gloomy metal corridor. You want to run, but you force yourself to stay quiet. You're getting close, and you're trying to be as careful and silent as possible. But when you suddenly face a huge and gloomy man standing in front of the next door, your heart drops. You want to run away, but you freeze just right where you are. He's definitely noticed you. You stand speechless, expecting him to grab and handcuff you or knock you unconscious. But instead, he asks, where are you going? You don't know why, but you tell the truth. I want to find my sister. She's 17, blonde. Ah, I've seen her, the man says. She's in this room. They always ignore me and never want to solve my riddles. Um, you know, if you solve one of my riddles, I'll let you go. You feel such a relief that you can only nod in response. What comes once in a minute, twice in a moment, but never in a thousand years? A very poetic riddle, but pretty straightforward. It's the letter M. The man smiles and moves to the side, letting you go. You run into the room. Finally, there's your sister. She has her arms and legs tied, and her mouth is sealed. But then, you look around and see two more of your sisters looking precisely the same. It's another trap. You have to decide which sister is the real one. And if you touch the wrong person, the sirens will sound. Can you choose the right sister? Before your sister was kidnapped, you were outside in the rain together. Your sister is the one with the smeared mascara. You reach the girl right in front of you, and the look of relief on her face immediately proves you made the right choice. You untie her hands and legs, unseal her mouth, and she gives you a hug. You grab her hand, and you leave the room together. But here's the riddle man again, and you'll have to solve another one of his riddles. Well, now you have two brains instead of one. Ready? When you take the hole from me, there's still some left. What am I? Both you and your sister answer wholesome. The man smiles again and lets you go. Now you have to find the exit and you have no idea where to go. You randomly take turns and, in the end, you get lost in the building's labyrinth. After half an hour of wandering around, you realize that you've been going around in circles. You admit that you're lost and can't find a way out. Suddenly, from each of the three directions before you, a man appears. Each man says he was kidnapped too, but escaped and will show you the exit while the other two men are guardians and will lead you back to your kidnappers. Who should you trust? You notice that the second man has bruises from the handcuffs on his arms, so you decide to believe him. You look at your sister and realize that she noticed it too. You nod, and each of you walks towards one of the other two, and unexpectedly for them, knock them out. The man gives you thumbs up and tells you to follow him. You're back in the labyrinth again, taking turns over and over. Does he really know where to go? How much time did he spend here? You even start worrying if you made the right choice, but then you bump into a massive metal door. To open it, you need to enter the password. But lucky you, there's a hint again. The note is saying 5th of March, 1st of October, 2nd of April, 4th of November. That's why the man was wandering around looking for someone. He couldn't crack the code. Can you? The 5th of March means the 5th letter of the word March, which is H. 
Similarly, the first letter of October is O, the second of April is P, and the fourth of November is E. The password is HOPE. You type it and yes, it works! Great job! The lock clicks and you pull the heavy door open. You did it! You are outside once more. It's early morning, so you spent the whole night inside. But wait, can you hear it? Footsteps! They're after you, and you have to run to a safe place immediately. There are three ways. On the left, there's a dark forest. Straight, there's a city. And on the right, a lake. Which way will you choose? You should definitely run straight to the city where there are people around. So, what are you waiting for? Run!